everyone welcome to the how to make love vibe pom-pom class and if you're here i'm hoping you found some yarn somewhere that you can play with if you don't have any hey you can always come back when you do but i'm really excited to share with you even more and more about what it is we did this morning in our class if you weren't there go back but this morning, using our imagination, we created a love vibe pom pom. Look at how amazing this is. So cuddly, warm and fuzzy. But we also talked a little bit about this, this pine cone energy, which um, we're going to talk a little bit more about in a second. But before we make our love vibe pom pom, I just want to review a little bit about what we've been doing this week. So this has been a process. You're at Love Camp. You are opening up to really actually asking for that love relationship. And we've been going through some specific stuff. And the first one is that ask. The first step at the opening ceremony, we did number one, step one, have I'm having that. We're saying, I'm having that. You did the ask. You created an intention. That was the first step in our process. Remember the mantra we were using, I'm having that. No doubt about that. I'm having that. No doubt about that. I'm having that. No doubt about that. So being able to be aware of that. Then day two, we created some space and developed our love landing pad at the beach. We created a, an actual love bubble with an X marks the spot where we actually opened up and expanded our consciousness and energy and awareness to experience having the space to let love come in because if you if you don't have space it can't come in and then the third one was today which we at the craft shop we connected into our yarn and made a warm and fuzzy pom-pom which we're literally going to do right now and that activated our love vibes and this becomes an amazing symbol for us to use and even have as a tangible charm as a as a altar item or something that you know you have to sit and meditate with even to remind you of that gentleness of the love vibes but one of the things we did also discuss was the pine cone so we talked about the cold and prickly which this is that that energy that we can be aware of with ourselves or not is this known and unknown stuff oftentimes this is where our blind spots are our blind spots are in those those places those spaces that we are are fearful or we have beliefs that we are unaware of that actually push and repel love away like the pine cone like you can't actually get into that inner core it has a protective um exterior that is not flexible whereas this you can squish in it and you can you can really connect in and it gives you an actual warm and fuzzy feeling so if you think about these two things like energies this is what it's a lot of people's energy can be like when when we're not feeling safe and secure within when we're not feeling like we can have what we want or we're not feeling like we're worthy of love that this is what it can be like and and when this occurs then you know that takes a different level of care to get our energy from this sort of 
you know, pushing away to a like cozy coming in to the warm and fuzzy of the pom pom. So, you know, I like to say, you know, if I were to give someone love, like I would like it to feel like this. I would like it to feel like kind and cozy and sweet and and even beautiful in the way that it feels to um, be gifted and received. So we're just using these two things as metaphors. So today I want to actually um, give you some simple instruction on how to make one of these. Who wants to make one? Um, post in the comments if you're really excited about making a pom-pom. You may already know how to do it, but hey, it's really fun to do it together. So I made this one this morning and today I brought some more yarn and we're just going to simply walk through how you make a pom-pom. It's really, really easy. And in our meditation this morning, we kind of saw the yarn as these kind of laser beams of love vibes going out. If you can imagine that when you're turning on that love vibe, like you're getting into that sweet, lovey place, that what happens with your energy is that it, it naturally expands. And you as an infinite being are everywhere. You are part of that one energy. And when we're feeling afraid or insecure or or not good enough, um, and it may not be in every area of our life, it may just be in some areas of our life, then what happens with our energies, it, it can kind of contract. And then when we're in that contracted energy, it's more like like this, that it's, it's hard to let people in. It's hard to be vulnerable. It's hard to have that intimacy. And oftentimes, this is the kind of energy we end up having with uh, the relationship with ourselves. If we're feeling like, oh, you know, I, I'm not good enough, or maybe I'm not worthy. Sometimes we're not even that nice to ourselves. And it becomes like a prickly energy at us. And if that's the case, then it does become hard to be something different for another person. If you, if, you know, you can't love yourself, how can you love anyone else is one of the things that I love a quote from RuPaul that is super cool. Um, and, you know, I do think there, there's sort of exceptions to that. I think that, you know, to have the goal of loving yourself 24 seven for the rest of your life, you know, may be a stretch, but there is more of what I consider like a kindness to yourself. You know, maybe you don't like some things here and there or the way you handle the situation or, you know, something that occurred in your life. And yet, can you be kind to yourself um, and have that be the demonstration of what you can uh, have with another person? So if you have your yarn, if you have your yarn, go ahead and bring it out and find the end, find the end of your yarn. And as you find the end of your, the, your yarn, today we're just going to use our hand as the measurement. You can use other things, like you could take a book and you could use that to, to wrap around if you wanted to make a bigger, bigger pom-pom. But we're going to want something to wrap around. If you want a smaller pom-pom, like this is my, my phone, you could wrap it around something smaller. I want to do one about this is this is the size of pom pom that was created when I used my hand. So I'm holding it in the palm of my hand and I'm using my thumb to lock in the end of the yarn. So I'm using my thumb to hold on to the end of the yarn. If you're just joining, pull out your yarn. Definitely go back to the beginning because we did a little review of our week holding on to the end of the yarn, and then you're just going to want to wrap it around your hand. And, you know, this is an opportunity to 
as we're creating this warm and fuzzy love vibe pom pom, this is an opportunity to really start maybe celebrating yourself, acknowledging yourself with each time that you wrap the yarn around your hand. What is it that you can acknowledge about yourself? Like acknowledge, you know, choosing to be at camp, acknowledging being present for, you know, the classes, acknowledge, you know, um, just being kind to yourself. Like whatever the thing is that you want to acknowledge about yourself and just keep wrapping it around your hand and you know the more you wrap it around the, the fluffier you're gonna have as a, a pom-pom and you want to try to make sure that as best you can that they're all about the same length sometimes when you wrap it in the, the middle those are going to be bigger and then on the side um they'll be smaller but we'll we'll do a little haircut on it at the end so just wrapping it around. I think I wrapped this one about like 30 times around my hand. Um, but you just kind of look at it and see um, what feels good. You definitely want to wrap it around enough so that you have enough fluff that it becomes round. Because if you have too little, then it's going to be more like a flat sort of tassel thing. So I'm feeling like this is, say this is a good amount of fluff. So that's quite a bit, right? So now I'm going to take my scissors, if I can find them right here. Got some scissors and just cut it. And then now you have this, this loop thing. So you wanna keep it all together. And then cut another piece. And I would say cut it enough, long enough so that you can tie it around the center. So now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to wrap it around the center of my blob. And I am going to tie it really tight right in the center. As best you can get it in the center, the better. There's less haircuts you have to do at the end. And then tie it really tight, and you probably want to tie it a couple times so you get a knot in the middle. And really make sure it's as tight as you can get. And once you have that, then you're going to see you have sort of this like round blob. You can almost see the 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 birthing of the pom-pom already. So now you take your scissors and you're just gonna go and cut all of these loops. And this may take a little while. Just cutting through all of the loops all around. You wanna Try to make sure you're cutting it in the, the center because as soon as you cut it, then those are going to be little strings in the pom-pom. And just going around and cutting it. So that it starts getting hoofed. Takes a little while. So then here we go. Couple more loops. You'll probably find some hidden in there later. It's easy to kind of miss some and discover them later. So then you can see, okay, so I have the string where I had tied it in the center, which this is sometimes fun to keep because if you want to attach a pom-pom to like a bag or attach it to a gift or something, you can you can keep these so that you can use it later. Um, 
But then you're going to see, you know, there's some that are longer than the other, depending on where, where you cut it. So then I like to just go through and start trimming it, just turning it around and seeing where long ones stand out. And, oh, see, I just found a loop. And just trim the edges so that you get them as even as you can possibly get it. But it's your pom-pom. So if you kind of like the, the different levels, you can keep it that way. That can be fun too. So then you do that. And you can keep going with that if you want. Yeah, so then there you go. There you have your warm and fuzzy pom-pom. So this is a really lovely thing, you know, something that you can now have as a remembrance of being at, at Love Camp. This is an awesome thing to gift someone if someone is feeling kind of sad. Maybe you give them what we call, this is a warm and fuzzy. And this is something I actually learned as a camper when I went to camp where we would make a pom-pom. And when someone was not feeling good, someone was feeling homesick or missing, missing home or, or struggling to make friends, then if you notice that you would, you would gift them a warm and fuzzy. And that was really telling them that you cared and that um, you wanted to give them love. So this is a really sweet tradition. And when you remember that, you know, not um, taking care of yourself, not being kind to yourself is more of a cold and prickly energy, not, you know, being able to open up to receive love or give love to someone else, maybe because you're feeling insecure, becomes this kind of energy. So what can we do to continue this? And just even sitting and meditating with this can change your energy into it. So I hope this was helpful and fun to be able to create your warm and fuzzy. If you have one that you just made, will you take a picture and share it in, in the group or post it below? I'd love to see how this goes and how it can be a helpful um, catalyst for turning on your own love vibes. So thanks for being here. We'll see you later. Bye.